measurements only differed from the correct ones by a few millimeters, but it was a difference that nearly cost 306 lives. A few days after the accident, Air Transat publicly accepted responsibility for the faulty maintenance. We have to realize that there was a small uh, a mistake uh, made uh, in terms of changing the pump. Uh, we installed it, uh, but then uh, some, some, some uh, pipes, uh, so to speak, uh, were needed to be connected to the pump, and there was a mismatch. The immediate consequences for Air Transat in that event was that they got to pay a fine of a quarter of a million dollar, which was the highest ever in Canada, for an error that could have been prevented. How someone that is supposed to be qualified in their job can put the wrong part onto an engine and risk 300 people's lives is, is, is beyond me. This incident is a very strong reminder that regulation is important and safety is important and lives will be lost in the absence of that. In their real lives, it's not just, you know, this imaginary figure in your head of 300 people, it's real people who suffer and continue to suffer as a result. If it hadn't been us suffering, it would have been our families. This was by no means the end of the story. Investigators now turned their attention to the cockpit itself. And what role had the crew played in the events of August 24th? Could they have done more to avert the crisis? Key questions remained unanswered. Questions about what happened on the flight deck. The Transport Canada investigation into Air Transat Flight 236 discovered that basic maintenance errors had led to the fuel leak. Air Transat had accepted responsibility and were heavily fined. But the focus now turned on the flight deck and the performance of the crew. What part did they play in the fuel loss? Wing cross feed, on. On. When the crew opened the cross feed valve to transfer fuel from the left wing tank to the right, they lost 17 tons of fuel in less than 30 minutes, yet they failed to close the cross feed valve and prevent further loss. We have lost both engines due to fuel starvation. We are gliding now. In the days after the incident, Captain Robert Pichet and Dirk de Jager were called before the inquiry and asked in detail about their actions. More than two years later, these findings have still not been published. What follows are possible explanations for the course of events that night, based on known facts and expert opinion. I temp low and oil pressure high on number two. The warnings of high oil pressure and low oil temperature from the number two engine on the right wing would not have led the pilots to suspect there was already a major fuel leak. The indications that were being presented uh, with respect to the oil system would probably not give the crew any indications. Uh, um, they may have questioned what was causing uh, the, the erroneous or strange indications, uh, but uh, there's nothing certainly in, in my mind or their training, I think, that would have uh, triggered them to suspect that uh, you know, a fuel system might be involved. I bet you it's a computer problem. But although the pilots thought they had a computer error, the oil warnings were actually correct and were the first indication of a much more serious problem. Fuel imbalance warning. I haven't seen that before. When the fuel imbalance warning came up 20 minutes later, showing less fuel in the right wing than the left, it seemed unconnected with the oil alarms. This could have reinforced Captain Pichet's idea that he was facing a series of computer errors. Do not apply this procedure if a fuel leak is suspected. Despite his doubts, Captain Pichet was obliged to follow Airbus procedure to correct the imbalance. He opened the cross feed valve. Wing cross feed, on.
but was following the checklist enough. You just can't uh, idly flip switches in response to commands from the computers and anticipate that all will be well at the end of it. You know, once the checklist is complete, uh, we can sit there fat, dumb, and happy. Uh, that's not the case uh, at all. You know, you 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 got to keep second guessing it. You know, is that right? Did we do the right checklist? Have we got the results that we need? Once the pilots calculated the high rate of fuel loss, they should have suspected a fuel leak. Transat 236 Heavy declaring fuel emergency. By the time they had confirmed the leak, their options were severely limited. Now they had a choice. Uh, do I close the crossfeed and, uh, and see what happens? Or do I leave the crossfeed open as, as the, as the uh, fuel and balance checklist has, has dictated? And maybe the situation will correct itself. The, the crew wasn't really sure. Captain Pichet believed for a long time that he was facing a computer error. It was only when the engine stopped that he had to accept the fuel leak was genuine. The technological complexity of modern aircraft can help to make them safer and more reliable, but it can also lead to problems that nearly brought catastrophe to Air Transat 236. Discrepancies in replacement parts led to a fuel leak. Distrust of computers led the crew to misread the situation. These errors have huge implications. Only because air traffic control initially sent the plane 60 miles south to avoid congestion was it close enough to the Azores when the crisis struck. Otherwise, it would have had to ditch in the ocean. The Portuguese investigation remains unpublished. Airbus blames the pilots for mishandling the fuel leak. Robert Pichet and Dirk de Jager continue to fly with Air Transat. In August 2002, they received one of the highest honors of the Airline Pilots Association for the longest glide ever accomplished in a passenger airliner. After the accident, Airbus modified its checklist in the event of fuel imbalance. From now on, the computer checks all fuel levels on board against the flight plan. It now gives a clear warning if more fuel is being lost than the engines can consume. Rolls-Royce has reissued a service bulletin alerting all its clients of the incompatibility of two almost similar parts. Whatever the circumstances are, uh, the pressure that he was under is tremendous. He, he got that plane down safely only blew out eight of the 12 tires <laughs> and saved 300 people. He saved 300 people's lives. Captain Pichet saved our lives. And um, whether or not he made an error um, or if there was a failure of a computer, it doesn't really matter because we're alive. <laughs> Do I think he's a hero? No. Do I think he's a hell of a pilot? Yes. Thank God the islands of the Azores were there and basically saved our lives. But if that fuel pump uh, broke two, five minutes beforehand, we'd, we would have ended up into, into the water and I probably wouldn't be here to tell the story. Mm -hmm.